as well. What we're going to do is give you guys just a couple of seconds and look at a little bit of what's going on with the Caleb plant, Caleb versus Caleb True App fight this weekend. And Ooh, yeah. just give you a little buzz and let you take a peep. And uh, Haley and I will step out for a second and let you enjoy something that you actually want to see. That I is got me pumped. Oh, I know that's gonna be so cool, right? A style like true acts. When you get in a style in the ring with a guy with a style like Kayla Plant, who's adopted a lot of different wrinkles from guys like Mayweather, I see a lot of stuff uh, from him that kind of mimics my guy uh, who really was extremely good using his link and that's Matthew Saad Muhammad. So I'm going to bring in my guy right now. He's uh, finally back in the building. Uh, I hope you're not riding around. Welcome to the show, Otis. Welcome back, brother. Hey, hey, hey. Good to see you guys. Happy New Year. It's been a minute. Yeah, no doubt, man. <laughs> What's good? Oh, man, you done bumped Haley out. <laughs> what happened? It's all <laughs> but. No, it's good to see you, man. We were just getting ready to jump, jump into the matchup and the styles and what truly makes someone like um, Caleb special. Why'd you drop out? If And what's unique, as I said, about his style, what people don't understand about this tactics that he used, he's taking good wrinkles. He's very clinical with his punch output. He's very systematic about the way he utilizes his defense. So as we speak about defense of prowess and counter punching, he can lead, but most of the time he leads, he, he leads to set you up and set traps for you. So as I break down the, the, sh the working in the shell, it allows you to operate. So the sector, all that muscle memory going on, that cortical plasticity, that's kind of what it, the term is. It's a neurological term. It's basically motor skills, sectors of the brain. And when you're operating in these sectors, what happens is the Philly shell allows you to sit back and grow this area, just like a bicep whenever you're a boxer, all right? So it's a region in the mind that whenever you are on that treadmill, it's expanding. So it starts to slow things down. You can become more accurate in very small, minute spots in a fight based upon that alone. And the Philly shell allows you to operate and to slow the game down because it just gives you functional time to respond to the guy. And repetition after repetition, I remember Floyd saying that he used to get in the ring at, 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 during training camps or not in training camps against much lesser oppositions just to take away what the guy could do and to develop that muscle memory and what that allowed his, his reflex time. Uh, it's very important that now your reaction time and you can hone in on, on, on targets much smaller and a much quicker amount of time. That's why his punch percentage was so high and his defense was so great because he worked that sector of the brain. And you can all pull it up, the cortical plasticity. That region, it allows you to really slow things down in slow motion, 120 frames per second kind of deal. 
where everybody else is operating all over the place, you're kind of honing in. How else can you explain how his connect percentage and his defense all merge together to be the best at the defense and the highest connect percentage of offense? So you look at Caleb Plant, and those are some of the things that you see in his boxing style. And in a couple of minutes after I let you guys weigh in, I'm going to play a little sector of one of the Philly Shell clips that we've done in the boxing gym so people can really get more insight to what does the Philly Shell offer outside of a pretty cool name and the rolling shoulder. So well, how do you see that style matchup, Otis? I'll, I'll let you weigh in because you are a fighter. Uh, the style matchup is, is just like you said. I like to think of it as almost like a, a Tai Chi type of uh, martial art where it's the transfer of energy. Mm -hmm. uh, when someone uh, throws from one side, you bring another side back. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people that use the Philly shell that are opposite of uh, there's There's definitely like I, I would say three types of Philly shells you can use. I'll talk about two because they're more of the, the era that a lot of uh, the people understand now. Uh, James Tony uh, uses a Philly shell or, or uh, a mongoose type style where he's stationary and he uh, absorbs uh, your shots by by uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. taking them on the top of the head, uh, taking them on the shoulder, yeah, and then he returns back with that with that right hand and with the jab uh, greatly. Uh, Floyd Mayweather uses the jab and his legs with his Philly shell which a lot of people nowadays don't do and they get in trouble because they, they, they try to uh, take on too much offense, whereas if they use their position in, uh, in their shell, in their legs, in their jab, yeah. it would be much easier and then they would be able to break down those frames like you're talking about. What uh, Caleb Plant does is actually uh, beautiful. It's almost like choreographed dancing, right? He knows what you're going to do when he's in a particular uh, section of the ring, mm -hmm. uh, the older the older fighters call it uh, fishing. And I, if you guys are out there listening, uh, the analogy of fishing: uh, when you're fishing and you and you and you drop your anchor and you're in a, a portion of the lake or whatever body of water that you're fishing in, if if it's not biting, then what do you do? You pick up and you move to another part of the lake. That's what uh, uh, Caleb Plant does in his style of boxing. Uh, he sets you up. He, he might be in the middle of the ring. He he he, he drops anchor. Mm -hmm. He invites you in with a with with, with like how you said a a jab or a offensive movement, only to set up three other counters off of it. Yeah, and that is what he's doing. He's waiting. To, he's dropping that. He's casting that that rod, that jab or that right hand uh, or whatever or the feint. You come in. He's got a bite, and then bop 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 bop. He touches you. Then. He moves out, be it underneath you, yeah. to the right, to the left, backwards, sets up the boat in another region of the water and does the same thing over and over and over again. Most people never catch on to it. And if they do touch, catch on to it, it's too late. Yeah. Good analysis. I love that analogy mm -hmm. of fishing. That's brilliant. Well, that's what it is. It's just like a pitcher. He throws all different types of balls. Mm -hmm. And... I think some people want to learn the Philly shell. As I was telling the young man that just posted about doing the Philly shell, man, do you understand what it takes the undertaking that it takes to learn the Philly shell? Let me show you something. You probably watching some YouTube videos where you need to be reading the book <laughs> when, when it take books, like you'll never get the Philly shell. You know, you got, you are, you'll learn four wrinkles on, on YouTube. And then what's going to happen when you get, all you're learning is enough to get yourself killed when you get in there against a real dude. That's why, you know, Andre Berto learned the hard way. And I, you know, I got to be careful. I'm, I don't want to tear him down, but you looking at somebody do this and y'all are going, I got a guy who, who does a testimony about, he thought that the Philly shell was just this. And he said, yo, everybody do. So you get like this and you think you can get you to 50 and 0. 100 and, and 141 knockouts for Archie Moore. You think he could just do that? You know, you got to be crazy to think that that's all it takes. It's just like saying because I watch Airplane, the movie, that I can go fly a plane. <laughs> like, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you to, to, to catapult off of your point, Otis, when you are delivering shots, 
I, I make sure that there's a specificity on change up speed and change up tight punches, angles that you're throwing a punch. And I noticed that uh, Caleb Plant really does that well. He gives you a variation and he doesn't just throw a jab in one place. He changes the angles of it. He changes the direction, the trajectory trajectory of it and he also makes sure that the speed of it is different so the only thing i haven't seen him do yet is put flurries together not six single shots like put 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 that's not a combination that's six punches all right uh letting them fluidly go combination boom 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 everything's rolling and rotating off those things are what is a lost art right now because everybody start watching Floyd throw single shots and yeah. every fighter yeah. today, 85% of the fighters today punch like that. And they think that's boxing. And that's why you'll see a lot of guys come up short. And it makes it boring. Can I give you a... Okay. Go ahead. You know, oh, it's yeah, so oh, strategic. Yeah. Uh, so you lose the yeah, excitement. Well, it, it appears to, it appears to be boring, but if, if you if you it's what we call a paint job, like those old uh, fighters say, if it's a paint job like what Floyd Mayweather's yeah. doing, then it's it's actually you know the the real boxing enthusiastic uh, people they they're gonna love it, you know. But uh, like you said, that's why people people uh, have been criticized Floyd as being boring or, or, or of that nature. But really, it's, it's the master of the of sport. What I wanted to piggyback on with you though, E, is um. Uh, a couple of uh, statistics. Uh, the reason Floyd, quote unquote, is pop shotting is not because he's limited to doing it. And that's what these youngsters don't understand. <laughs> he is setting up. Yeah. He's, just like Caleb, he's yeah. setting up, he's fishing. And if you don't bite on the hook, then he's not going to stay there in that, in that region and allow you to, 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 to take over. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's all strategic. If yeah. you set a person up, yeah. you don't just do uh, – boxing is, is, is doing what you want to do when you want to do it, not l allowing somebody to do what they want to do. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. It, it, and um, I also wanted to say that uh, once I was watching uh, – uh, when back when uh, uh, George Foreman was uh, uh, a commentator on HBO, it was right when I was uh, uh, coming out of football, taking up uh, – boxing and and, and, I, and like and like we shared uh uh personally in our discussions i learned a lot of boxing by watching countless and countless of hours of video from the black and white era all the way to to the modern era and then countless and countless of uh of uh rounds in the gym uh, uh against people that were at a higher caliber than me that's why my my learning curve uh, was was uh was faster than uh, the than most yeah but um one thing that that uh that George said that I'll never forget is that uh he was in a, a, a argument with Lampley cuz Lampley's like, "Oh yeah, uh, the guy uh he hasn't been um uh, uh learning this style long enough, but he's great at it and um and he's probably better than the Oscar de la Hoya at it." And then uh and, <laughs> and George <laughs> kind of gets uh, peed off and, and and he's like, "How are you going to learn something in a matter of months?" That somebody been learning their whole life. That's not possible. And that's exactly what you, you know the, the 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 comment that you made. A lot of these guys think like, oh, I'm gonna get the bells and whistles of this thing, and then I'm gonna go out here and, and go fifty. You know, no. Do you know how long it took Archie Moore to perfect that style to invent the the mongoose style? Trial and error, countless amounts of of of, of not only uh, fight yeah. like live contests to get the people but ring generalship in in the gym uh mm -hmm. training shadow boxing you know learning the tools and and the, and you know i had a i had a, a portion of it in, in my game um i whipped it out uh one time in the broadway boxing fight uh a matter of fact years ago uh against um uh joe smith <laughs> the champ right now <laughs> and, oh uh, yeah that's cool and if you if you guys look at joe smith uh ledger i'm one of the only people that he never knocked out. And the reason being is because he threw some hot stuff at me and I was in a, a, a regular boxing stance and I went to the turtle shell, uh, yeah. which is, you know, yeah, the, 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 uh, yeah. the original the Philly shell is the turtle shell. Yeah. And, and it's a rap defense. And, and, um, and the first thing, uh, 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 uh the, the, uh, forward and all those guys like, Oh, I haven't seen that in years. 
<laughs> well, you know, you know, Foreman was taught by the greatest. Foreman oh, was, yeah. Yeah. And, and um, and 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 um, he, they're like, oh, I haven't seen that in years. The turtle shell deep, the rap defense. And the reason I went to it is because I'm like, yo, this dude is throwing some hot stuff. Yeah. Uh, he's not gonna be able to hit me. I'm yeah. limited in offense. I can throw the straight right. I can whip the jab, but I'm eliminating things. There's a strategy behind all of this, Eric. And yeah. and 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 if you're out there and you want to learn this stuff, you can't just watch the modern era. You got to go back like yeah. I did as a youngster. And go all the way back to the black and white era, uh, like like uh, like like your um, uh, your 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 people yeah, the and, and everything. Yeah, you gotta you so gotta look at the, the, the lineage yeah. of this whole thing, mm-hmm. and 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 you know and 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 go back and see, and not only see how uh, learn how to fight it, but learn how to beat it because yeah. in, you know yeah. a wise man knows his limitations. Yeah, you, you know? know. Yeah. That's good stuff. When you take that into consideration, it's the, the the analogy is if you're going to go to music class to learn to sing, you know, you you don't just pick up Katy Perry and, and, and Taylor Swift albums and just start singing. You go to class. You go learn your ABCs, your CAORs. You learn tone. You learn how to carry bridges and you know how to sing chorus. You, it's all about the system and people don't understand. You can't just put on a CD and play it and learn how to sing. You know, I know Justin Timberlake's a cool dude, but you can't learn to sing from him. All right. You either know how to sing or you're not, but if you don't, you got to learn keys. And that's what boxing is. It's the system of playing the piano. You can't play the piano right without keys. And most of everybody is lacking keys. And I'll date it back to this muscle memory that if you do not, boxing is all muscle memory. Otis, you know this. You learn something. You know, your first coaches was probably like the jab and you work in the jab. And then you're learning other forms of defense and then learning how to really deliver body shots. And then you can go back. You start throwing the jab. And you're like, dang, my jab. I'm getting countered. And it's just like because <laughs> – that's one of the reasons I'm doing the series now, everything to jab on It's Time to Box, because I'm going to do that 52 times, 52 different lessons about the jab this year, once a Sweet. week, 52, just to show people how in-depth the jab is. We have fighters that came into training camp six days a week, sometimes seven, and they did footwork for six straight months. That was the that's the way you learn when you're learning from a depth, the lineage. Anytime your his- history and heritage goes back 100 years, you're going to do things that really count. You're not going to get nothing off of YouTube. You're not even going to go to YouTube to learn boxing. So if that's what you're doing to learn boxing, you're already in the wrong house. Now, the guys who are under our tutelage at the School of Boxing, they are learning first. And what they see, they're out there judging it. <laughs> they're not looking to learn it now because they have a platform to learn it. But the true essence of it is you constantly forget things you're learning. If you are learning something new, you're, you're already forgetting the stuff that you just learned a little bit more. And that's one of the reasons you find so many athletes fighting and it's like, man, they coming up short in so many different areas. It's because trying to adapt and adopt all of these other wrinkles, you're losing the ones yeah. that really count the most. So uh, our best, uh, it's time to box will go on all year, and it's going to be only about the jab. And I and one of the things I said is, it's it's going to look so thorough that you think you're watching a peekaboo, but you're just watching the most basic form of boxing: one jab, good sitting down in my stands and windshield wipers. You learned that day one in the gym. You know what I'm saying? Like that ain't the peekaboo. And I think people just get it twisted and they don't understand boxing. You know, her uncle, great uncle started the peekaboo, Archie Moore, peekaboo. All of these guys were in it. They fought in it and it's complete and it's complete package. And now it got 
what we call Broadway got spread all over it and it became this kind of media frenzy. So Mike Tyson just had to look to deliver the rest of that media energy to it and bless him because he made it so famous that people just are just enamored with it all together. But just a killer in that <laughs> ring. They didn't want that smoke and stuff. So if you guys are out there, you want to see pure boxes, you can pull up some stuff from Howard Davis. He's another good one to watch. There's just so many good ones. I love watching people like Donald Curry. He was one of my favorites to watch. Oh, yeah. up and Michael Nunn. Oh, yeah. I love to see nice, long, rangy boxers who know how to box long and rangy and know how to use the ring. And Donald Curry and Michael Nunn were two good fighters who knew how to do that well. Uh, I wasn't such a big fan of Lennox Lewis, but he did know how to control really? the ring if you're a heavyweight. That's a style to adopt. But if you don't have a teacher like Emmanuel Stewart, he can't you can't learn the the, the wrinkles that it takes to master that style. It's, it's more than just stiff arm. And you got to just it's just so much behind boxing. It's just it's just bananas what we're up against with teaching. So, Otis, I'm going to get you to come into uh, the school of boxing and do a, a clinic with me uh, in Fe me in February. Uh, we're having our ceremonies so I want you to come in and I'm going to introduce you to our, our squad. Haley and uh, her dad, Ted, will be in there at the same time, too. So I'm looking right. forward to doing that with the guys. TSO be in the building. Uh, this is this is just part of a movement and uh, the fabric of what the sport got to be built on. And it got to be built on sturdy men. And we're going to be sturdy and, and, and stand for what's right and do what's right. But these guys, we are going to put this petition into play. And it's going to go and it's going to be loud because I got a, I got all the platforms. I got Instagram where I'm doing Instagram live before I do It's Time to Box. I did It's Time to Box on Instagram. 6,000 people live on the feed. You get it? All right. And that was my first one. So you can imagine. I got 90,000 following just over there. So we're going to get it popping. If you have not watched that It's Time to Box, watch because you need to learn that boxing. But I'll be able to chime over there, chime on YouTube and facebook so let's get this thing baby it's about it's time to get it on let's get these boxing sanctions working together let's get these freaking promoters back in the same room chopping it up so we can watch some good boxing every week it should be fights on every week every week you know eric you reminded me in the 1970s tony zale carmen basilio and um willie pep went yeah. to washington and they talk to Congress about doing exactly what you're doing, come up, coming up with like a national yeah. boxing, for lack of a better word, association. Oh and it's, it would be a dream that has been, of course, in my family for decades, but yeah. I'm sure other people's as well. The boxing buzz. Haley, what you got going on over there with the news this week? So did you all hear that the WBC put Floyd Mayweather on the green belt? No. Yep. I know. I know. So you know how they have the little uh yeah. images, yeah. the photographs. Yeah, I got they one got, right here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sweet. They got Mike yeah. Tyson on there now. They got um let's see. They have Jose Suleiman, obviously, Muhammad Ali, obviously. Yeah. Mayweather now and um Tyson Fury. Oh, I ain't got the one with Tyson Fury. Mine has Jose Suleiman, Sugar Ray, Joe Lewis, oh, nice. Muhammad. Floyd Mayweather, Mike Tyson. Oh, you got Joe Lewis on yours? That's great. I got Joe Lewis on mine, and it's um, I'll put the, I'll take the picture of it, and y'all will read it. I'll let y'all read it, and um. But I, I mean, I get that Floyd is spectacular for what he's done and his record alone being undefeated. Um, mm -hmm. but I think it's kind of soon. <laughs> to put him on the green belt like wait wait a while you know? okay what do you think that has to do with uh maybe um inspiring who's the, the richest young athlete generation? in the world who's the richest uh, athlete in the world okay Steel. yeah yeah okay all yeah, right yeah. all right well sanctioning <laughs> sanctioning bodies need money, the money all right team. be realistic now Haley. don't forget mm -hmm. those are non-profits you do know that, right? Yeah. So yeah. donations mm -hmm. matter. You know, they like the yeah. people over there are working. They're those people are volunteers. You know, 
you, you, you know, that that's no joke. So, uh, so that's cool. Anything yeah. Else? Um, we've got, um, official word as of two hours ago that Ryan Garcia and Manny Pacquiao will probably have an exhibition fight either April 24th or May 1st. So they're going to do it. Now that is what tripped me out. It's not the fact that the fact that they're going to call it an exhibition. Yeah. Don't even well, play. That's just weird. Yeah. Don't take two top names and do exhibit. That's a fight. It, that's exactly what that Garcia's no sense. What trainer is dad that, saying. Active names. They're active. They're both active. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how they're gonna figure that out. But at I mean, least we have a date. A I got. Date. I got more respect when you go out there and pluck one of the guys from the UFC or Bellator, and, and, and that makes more sense to call it. There's no reason to call. Garcia versus Pacquiao, when that starts to build up and get close, they're going to forget that it's a freaking, you know. You know that, could it be because Pacquiao doesn't be want like, This is supposed to be an expedition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? an expedition. yeah like Apollo's brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you think maybe it could be Pacquiao's protecting possibly his no. record? No. No, because he well, no. you know what it what it, it you comes think he down lose to Ryan Garcia? That I mean, dude got no, drunk. What it came, by what it comes it. down to is they're protecting <laughs> Ryan. Good, they protect they're protecting oh, Ryan. Ryan. Oh, yeah, oh, man, but he got man holes in his game. Look. They're protecting Ryan and his earning potential for the future because he's so too green sense, to then. be Pacquiao yeah. right now, or maybe too green. So why risk it a, a young bull getting his head cut off by this this old guy on his way out? Mm. I wonder if they'll do like one minute rounds or two minute rounds instead. No, no, no. They, they do. No. They, <laughs> they'll do, they'll do, they, it ain't Tyson. They ain't 54 years old. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. This dude's right. young. Uh, Pacquiao, yeah. I mean, if Pacquiao says, yeah, I'm only going to do that, Pacquiao's the Energizer Bunny. Still, still mm -hmm. the most active fighter. The only one that really puts those combinations, what I was saying earlier, he, he throws combinations and so what I was going to do is when it comes down to that's the only thing that gave him trouble fighting Floyd because Floyd knew how to fight in the box. So what I'm going to do is give the audience a couple of overlays of what the Philly shell entails. Boxing is a constant when you really do it and you're in it for real. It's a constant. Ah, it's a constant. You got to be able to channel that. So you got to become a martial artist. As I spoke to when I talked to Conan Silviera. I said, people always say, is boxing a martial art? And I'm saying, no, I'm explaining something. Boxing stands alone. It's the sweet science, but it takes a go. martial artist to become the highest level of boxing. Your mind got to be in the right place. Your heart got to be in the right place. Humility has to be first. And that's what makes a purist in boxing. You can't fake and become great. At, as at boxing and become a master of the sweet science. That's why I utilize the phrase purist. Purist means it's just like that water that does not have to be filtered. And so what I'm going to do is show you a little segment. So guys, we're going to pop out and I'm going to play this little quick segment of what it looks like inside of the gym when you're learning styles like the Philly shell, <laughs> what some of the biomechanics these guys got to go through. And so you get to see a little bit when you see these guys fighting and using it, but you don't understand all the stuff that goes into the biomechanics of it. So what and exactly so are these? They're mitts, but I must correct you on that. These are the mitts that I shot one of the most prolific boxing styles on the face of the planet which is the Philly Shell. In the history of the Philly Shell, the Philly Shell was created to prevent someone from striking you whenever they wanted to. You can take a person's offense away from him utilizing the Philly Shell. Those specific mitts were used to teach the specific speed reaction drills and counterpunch skills, not just defense, boom, boom, blocking with the fours, blocking all four points, peep, peep, and these, the air mitts, 
I use these to increase the punch power, the endurance, because the Philly Shell is known for being a defensive style, which ingrains counter punching. But as you will see, the Philly Shell is much more than that. When you look at the methods of teaching, a lot of guys needed to improve their defense, needed to improve their counter punching. But in this series, we teach you how to be an offensive juggernaut on, on top of being defensively responsible. That's what the Philly Shell is gonna offer to you. You're gonna see methods of walking around. We call it the grunt walk, where you see guys like James Tony who use the Philly Shell, the crouch, Georgie Benton, Jersey Joe Walcott, all of these fighters. And of course, one of the greatest who have ever done it, Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Bernard Hopkins, masterful in that ring. Always force guys to have the lowest connect percentage against them because of that Philly shell. Boom, boom, learning the four points. You're gonna learn how to block and work from the inside countering, utilizing arms, elbows, shoulders, legs. The Philly shell is a masterful science. You will learn so many things in this teaching. It's a 90 minute education and all of the specific skills you'll learn how to walk someone down inside of that ring a la Floyd Mayweather Conor McGregor you'll learn how to switch from shell to high guard press a guy back we're teaching you all facets of the shell most guys only learn tidbits and they can't truly execute it I've heard a lot of guys out in social media saying oh I try to use the Philly shell and I can't really get it, it doesn't really work for me. Well, facets of the Philly shell is what you've learned. Understanding that now you're gonna be able to have the entire package, how to work this thing and improve your repertoire inside of that boxing ring. This is one of the most prolific teachings in the sport of boxing. My name is Coach Eric A. Bradley and I thank you guys for taking the time out to invest and buddy up with the school of higher learning. I hope you're ready to take your boxing game to the next level. This is the Philly Shell, delivered to you by Master Boxing. And remember, we, we work for you. And this is where you'll get your master's degree in boxing. My experience with the Philly Shell, uh, I like it. I feel like it adds another element to my defense. I'm excited to see where it takes my game. So I thought it was awesome. Uh, my defense confidence improved, and I learned different angles and how to block, uh, and also how to counter too. Cool. My experience with the Philly Shell is comfort, as far as draw the line and stay there, mm -hmm. and sizing up the opponent. That's my experience. That's what I like about it. Cool. I feel comfortable. My defense got way better. And I also can counter. That's my experience with the good shell. And I know how to get away from the right hand. My name is Robert Reed, but in the boxing gym, I go by Zion. A few of the wrinkles that it takes whenever you're doing this this development. So where you what you saw, excuse me, oh, what you saw was these guys were inside of the box and inside of the box. One of the things that people underestimate is when you look at a, a fighter, like let's just say for instance, James Tony uh, Holyfield didn't use the Philly shell, but he went into a shell. You know, sometimes he cross block turtle shell and then he would use his shoulders, elbow block. Holyfield was amazing. Mm -hmm. But what has to happen is you have to develop the muscle, the body, the dexterity of the body. So when you get inside of that box, those four bags that you saw on the floor, and we hit the clock, we set the clock for 75 seconds because that's how intense it gets. If you're up here playing this game and you, your dexterity ain't right, you're just going to get broken, bloody, swollen, cut, all the good stuff. Because that box tells the truth. That's why you can only go for 75 seconds. So you can just imagine how tough it really is. Everything that you can do in the ring, you can't do that in the box. And when you get pressed in that little that little 
five by five and those punches are coming, you're going to get hit harder. You're going to break down faster. You're going to get exhausted quicker. You're going to feel that that thing, that fear factor is going to come in, that anxiety until you develop, until you can stay in that pocket and work and understand and see things coming. And that muscle memory, that expansion part of the mind opens up and things start to slow down. And then you can go to 90 seconds. Nobody stays in the box for over 90 seconds. It's wow. impossible. You just won't do it. I mean, it gets, I mean, that's the smoke. So with that being said, that's it right here. When you see that, when you see that right there, that's that Philly shell. That dude that wanted it is down there. That's in the link. That key, that teaching right there. Like I put, I, I, I might put that, have that sent out on a shout out. It's a 12 minute version of that kind of teaching. Mid training, yeah, da, 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 da. honestly, that's good reaction stuff, da, 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 all that stuff. That's cool. You need quick twitch muscle, but I'm telling you, none of that stuff come into play when you're inside of the box and you getting hit and boom, fluster and push with punches move. If a guy get one clean shot in on you, one clean shot, that is the demise of what's going to happen. Like you're going to, it's going to finish because it's going to rattle you differently than when you have a lot of space to move. You get it? Like you're trapped in a corner, even when you're not in the corner in a five by five. Guys are in 16 foot rings, minimal. That's the small ring. We're in a five by five. You get what I'm saying? Like you can't even fall down and land inside the ring. Your, your head will be out because five feet, you know, at on the easy days we go six so it's six by six so you got to really learn how to buckle down sit down in your stance and get in the pocket and that's what they learn in those downloads that we we teach and sharing with these guys and in the school is you're good coach that's amazing that's, that's a crazy drill it's crazy it's hard as hell and guys think they tough and 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 when a lot of the guys that would always come to the gym to spar. I said, you sure you want to spar? Because I'm sitting at the desk right now with my waiver and I don't, I'm not playing. I'm like, you sure you want to spar? And I'm talking world-class cats a lot of the times like that. I said, because if you got any holes in your game, you do not want to go and bump. We can run drills and the drills is going to be hard it was so hard that we had an undefeated pro come in. He's in one of the videos that were posted about two weeks ago. Undefeated pro who had been up in D.C. training. And I said, let's just do drills because he had been to the gym before. And we basically had to put him on suicide watch after he realized he wasn't as good as he thought he was. Came back mm -hmm. two years later. Came back wow. two years later. Being in D.C. then became an undefeated professional came back and seen the drills again that the guys were doing. And I said, you can just get some drills. You don't have to get in the ring. And needless to say, he took part in a drill. One round, inside of one round, he already was down. Inside the box. No, we actually, we had moved the box. It's an inside the box drill, but we moved the boxes out, the bags out of the way. And they did it. And I got it all on video. So anybody that ever has come to my gym, they know they better not ever cross me because I got footage that'll put guys <laughs> out of the sport for good. And these guys are undefeated pros. And, and I know they watching. <laughs> so you know I got your footage. You know you better. Yeah, I got this game. <laughs> I got the sex tape, buddy, on you. I got the sex <laughs> tape on you, buddy. You better not ever slip. Hey. Bribery. I mean, when you, get, when you get in there, and, and it was good, though. This day, what we did was had a conversation about what his experience was going up north and getting in, the, in there in the dungeon and bumping with guys who are on an elitist of levels, signed with top rank, signed with Golden Boy, and training with those guys who got those contracts. And he was like, yo, man, every day I get my butt whooped. But you thought you was the king when you was coming in here. And then you realized that you weren't. So uh, with that being said, you guys got to get educated the right way. And, and yes, just like we do the show all the way through, we make sure it's like TV for you. 
same thing that we I did with the programs, man. Because these guys got to learn. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. I, when I'm watching boxing, I know Otis. You can speak double this down. You want to see some good quality boxing. You want to see some good wrinkles. You want to see some things that take you back to when you had to study to fight for yourself. You want to see things that make your mind go, hmm. That's what I do when I watch Canelo. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. That dude's a problem. So, you know, that's all I got. So, Otis, who you who you rolling with this weekend, man? Who's going to win this fight and how? Uh. I think uh, you know Caleb Plant is uh, younger and um, and definitely uh, you know uh, in a in a better position and is, it should be the the front runner to win. But I will tell you this: uh, Caleb Truex is no joke. Um, yeah, he uh, fortunately is has been promoted and, and groomed correctly by Tony G. Yeah, um, he's been brought along and uh, he you know he's graduated college doing boxing. He's uh, 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 taken time off. He's fought uh, great fights uh, and, and even been robbed against some some people like Jermaine Taylor. But um, he's never stopped learning. And one thing about Caleb that uh, I've seen and, and I've uh, uh, worked with him uh, up at Big Bear and, and things of that nature is that he will lull you to sleep and then he will catch you with sharp punches. Yeah. If you go back... And you watch uh, a lot of fights that he's he's won. It's almost like uh, very boring. Then all of a sudden, boom! Hello, all yeah. of a sudden, the guy's <laughs> on the ground. So I'm going to predict that Caleb Plant probably is going to win this fight, but he's going to have to get off the deck to do it. You think he's going to get dropped? Yeah, I think because the fact that he he can hide behind that shoulder and he he go, he do it well. He doesn't take it light. He's maniacal about his drive. He told the coach he'd fire him if he didn't press him harder, if he took it light on him. Now, the coach said that on a countdown. So if you guys haven't watched Countdown, go check that out. Truex versus uh, Plant. Countdown on Fox, PBC. Um, very good little segment. It really was about more on Plant. So you could see how he really took the initiative to let it be known how driven he is. He kind of reminds me of a, a Bernard Hopkins who's driven. He lives it. That's all that matters to him. When you're in the ring with a guy like that, you're in there against a pure fighter who actually just simply knows how to box. And with that being said, He's going to always give you so much more than what you expect that he could give you because you can't really tell what's happening to these guys when you're watching it on videotape until you're the one that's in there and he's doing it to you. That's why it was so hard to prepare for people like Pacquiao, people like Bernard Hopkins and James Tony. You're like, what is he doing? <laughs> like he's just constantly right there, but not a sweet pea. It looks like you can go bring in a sparring partner to get you prepared. And then when you get in that ring, you lost all 12 rounds. How did that happen? I was I bought the best sparring partners, but the sparring partners didn't have all of the algorithms. It didn't have all of those different languages. And that's kind of what sets people up for failure. You have to learn how to be a purist. And a purist does not take shortcuts. When I see Caleb Plant, I don't see any shortcuts being taken. I see he, he lives maintains it. his weight. He stays at 168. Yeah. You know, for, he doesn't have to cut weight. And that, yeah. I mean, Uncle Tony was like that too. He maintained his weight. He wasn't like Jake Lamada, you know, pigging out after fights. <laughs> um, Ricky Hatton. Yeah. Did we lose Otis? Yeah, I think he bounced out. Oh. He'll pop back. But okay. the, that those guys have a, a powerful impact. But just I want the guys to know this: you got to realize that this this is a real sport, and you got to take it seriously. And uh, if you want to learn how to do it, you got to do it the right way. There's no shorts. You don't. You won't make it to the top. You won't make it anywhere. You know, it's m so many guys that are not able to fight right now, and yeah. that is solely because the guys aren't sitting down the promotional companies aren't sitting down 
And it's also because there are so many other guys who are credible, who've gone through an extensive amateur career and grooming process, who have yes. the right people helping them and aiding them build their brands, who are aligning themselves with big brand names, being affiliates and brand, amb brand ambassadors. And that's what we are teaching and talking to our guys. We just had a live stream yesterday of encouragement in our school of boxing online. And the guys just, you know, it was just able to take things in and understand how much really goes on behind this. I mean, you saw them take off with SpaceX. They, they heading to yeah. the moon. I mean, to, to the Mars. But can you actually yeah. build a spaceship or a rocket? Absolutely not. And what we are doing in boxing, we're building rockets, rocket science over here. So don't think <laughs> you can watch some TV or your phone and learn this stuff. This is real. And it's a lot more that goes by engineering this than you could ever imagine. And if you don't think that's the case, you could always show up and we can get you in the ring and we can prove it to you. <laughs> That you don't <laughs> want no smoke. Yeah, because all, all you've learned is enough to get you killed. Serve them a slice of humble pie. That's kind of all <laughs> it is, though. But, you know, hey, this is boxing. This isn't, you don't play boxing. Nope. You play. It's survival. <gasps> oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still yeah. got to get one of yeah. those. This is the joint. I ain't gonna get I ain't gonna get started again. Boy, that's that Oculus for y'all. <laughs> that's what's hot now. The Oculus, that that uh, thrill of the fight and that creed, that is the heat on the street. It keeps me in shape. Do you do you remember the old little Nintendo with like the oh, gray yeah. oh, console? And I always and have he, everything. The boxing one. Oh, be Mike Tyson. Be Mike Tyson. Fight Mike Tyson. Punch outs and they punch got out. all yes. man. Look, ball boot. All bull and all of those glass Joe, all those mm. man. Look, cause that was the joint. Those are the characters inside of the game that you wanted to play against. And when you got in there, oh, oh, I didn't. Even, hold up, I didn't even see you back. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, it's coming back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They should. Mike Tyson is the guy to make that happen. Say that again, Otis, so they can hear you. They should do a new Mike Tyson's punch out for this era and then like put all the all the, the relevant uh fighters of that you know uh are into the game uh, of this era for like Deontay Wilder and and uh and Tyson Fury and you know and, what? and you know AJ and That's all these guys great. it'd be a great fight. The guys are always being they got agents, they're always trying to be so tough and trying to get so much money and stuff they want to monetize everything but ea sports is locked up doing uh finishing their last run of ufc four and their contract is up next year no it might this might be the year that's up but they had like a five-year thing commitment to ufc so that's why it's to, it was taking so long to get back to boxing but i saw that the wbc posted a boxing video game that was on the rise and they were asking you know a poll about who, what fighters would you want to see in this game and it looked pretty good the footwork was kind of flow i was like it looked like you've been watching master boxing page you know what i'm saying it got a little footwork going got a little <laughs> ollie stuff going i was like yeah that's hot it's kind of <laughs> hot shuffle. but man to get a new boxing game throwback fighters in it yeah but you know what the fact that you got people in this game that's trying to monetize the things like these contracts for these fighters to sign on to do stuff like that you know that's the thing that's killing that but yeah it would be great to see a new punch out but you know what mm -hmm. the guys that started that oculus game thrill of the fight they killed it if if no one has played Thriller to Fight, if you don't have an Oculus and know this is not a sponsored ad, <laughs> Oculus is just hot like that. And you can just be in when you put it on and you pick choose your game and you go to Thriller to Fight and you look around, you're like this. Like when yeah. you put that thing on, you're in a totally different world. Totally different world. Same thing with Creed.
you put it on, you're in a totally different world. And you can, I mean, work. I mean, it make you feel like you really working. And so thanks. Shout out to Fleming for turning me on to Thrill of the Fight. I already had Creed. But Thrill of the Fight is just throwback. It's Tony Zell. It's Archie Moore. It's, you know, Graziano. It's throwback. <laughs> I mean, you really feel like you're back in the old days, man. And it's, it's that is so cool. So yeah. trippy. It's crazy. So that's it. Is man. it designed as a workout or is it designed no, as it, a game? Gonna be a, you can hit, you can go in the gym, hit the speed back, work the heavy back, but really? they got pro programs for you to train like you the fighter. And you go in there, you're doing this though. So you got to do your rounds on the bag. You got to do your rounds on the run. You got to do your rounds on the pads. Like you got Rocky holding pads for you. Pop, pop, pop. Ah, you, making you weave like you working like that's your oh, work that sounds so fun oh i'm on vacation <laughs> in the mountains at thanksgiving i'm out there i'm overseeing a nice waterfall mountains everywhere 4 a.m in the morning i'm in them all in a fight if people's everybody sleep stays in their sleep i'm in there like they're a little fight working 4 40 a.m i'm soaking wet <sighs> Yo, wow. about eight to do it again. I'm like, yo, you put in about six or seven rounds. You, you like really worked. You know, I felt, I felt like, I mean, it's, it's, it's unreal that everybody does not have that thing in their house. And like I said, until next time, be blessed at God's speed, guys. No, we're going to bring a truce to the sport of boxing. Truce in boxing. Hashtag every time you post truce in boxing so long guys enjoy Haley. i chat with you kiddo